everyone. I'm Cheryl Butler, and you're listening to the Mighty Mommy's Quick and Dirty Tips podcast, which will help make your life as a parent a little bit easier and a lot more fun. Welcome. This is episode number 303, where my special guest is my colleague, Laura Adams, QDT's financial expert known as Money Girl. And we'll be talking about a very real scenario in today's parenting world, how to cut the financial cord with adult-age kids who either haven't moved out or have returned home to live there after college. Laura's got some great advice on how to help these kids get their financial affairs in order. As parents, we do our best to love, nurture, and raise responsible and self-reliant children. For many parents, the goal is to help them have a successful high school experience and then find a suitable college, vocational school, or career path that will carry them into adulthood where they'll flourish into productive members of society. It's a great plan, but a new trend has taken parenting by storm that threatens this well-intentioned progression. Adult kids returning home after college or never leaving to begin with. According to a recent Pew Research Center analysis of a 2012 U.S. Census Bureau data, 36% of the nation's young adults ages 18 to 31, the so-called millennial generation, were still living in their parents' home. That's a record 21.6 million millennials living with their parents in 2012. That's up from 18.5 million of their counterparts in 2007. This report states that this increase of young adults who live in their parents' homes appears to be driven by a combination of economic, educational, and cultural factors. While these are certainly worthy reasons, there are also situations where adult children seem to hang on like leeches, refusing to grow up and draining their parents of time, energy, privacy, and of course, money. Today's working families are having enough challenges paying for college and saving for retirement, but with this trend of adult children not leaving the nest, parents are faced with even more difficult decisions on how to make it all work. My guest today is Laura Adams, a financial expert and host of the Money Girl podcast. Laura will share how to help adult children get ready for independence. Laura, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, it's my pleasure, Cheryl. Great. Well, listen, we have a lot to get to. So my first question is about how to prevent this situation from happening in the first place. Is there anything parents can do before their kids leave for college or to go out into the workforce to groom them to sustain themselves financially once they leave? Yes, definitely. You know, this situation reminds me of one of my favorite movies with Matthew McConaughey called Failure to Launch. You guys may have seen it. It's, it's great. A, <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> yeah, it's a great rom-com that shows how far parents will go to get an adult child out of the house. And I think one of the most important tasks for parents is to begin setting expectations during high school and college. So I think for many adult children, the fallback option for moving home is something that they just take for granted. So parents who don't discuss plans ahead of time you know, have to assume some of the blame when a child fails to launch, you know, and as for a financial plan, the first step is certainly to make sure that the adult child is working. Not many people find their dream job right off the bat, but they need to begin working at something at least to get experience. And then it also helps them build a professional network and earn income. That's the very first step. Oh, that's good. I'd imagine that considerations need to be made on an individual basis, but is there any rule of thumb or appropriate guideline for when adult age children should be considered old enough to manage their own financial affairs? I think anyone who is capable of holding down a steady job and living on their own should be able to manage their own finances. Of course, different personality types are going to be better at this than others, But with some parental guidance, I think it can be easily learned. What are some suggestions that overwhelmed parents can implement with their 20-something age children to help contribute their fair share if they do move back home after college? It's critical that everyone living at home contribute. So if the adult child is not working, they can contribute by doing other things like helping out around the house. 
Now, if they are working, they should be contributing financially to the household proportionally for things like rent, food, and utilities. This is going to prepare them for living alone or even with roommates in the future, getting used to, you know, contributing their fair share and and making sure that they understand their portion of the financial responsibility. Ah, yes, their fair share. I think there's the key right there. Are there ways that these young adults can get loans or credit to help them get established while they're in this transition period? Sure. One of the best ways to start building credit is through a secured credit card, one that reports payment transactions to one or more credit bureaus. That's the trick. A secured card is kind of like a regular credit card, but on training wheels. What happens is you pay a refundable deposit that becomes your credit limit. So for instance, if you pay 200 or 500, you can make total charges up to that amount. And you save a, receive a monthly bill, just like with a regular credit card, and you build a positive payment history if you pay the minimum amount due on time each month. What are some of the problems that adult children will be facing in their future financial life if they continue to live at home? Many boomerang children who don't have bills or credit accounts in their own names will have some problems. The issue is that they'll have no credit because they're going to have a very thin credit file. So having no or poor credit can cause a variety of financial problems, including high utility deposits, high auto insurance rates, and even getting turned down to rent an apartment when they're ready. Ooh, that's not good. Should parents offer an allowance to these adult children, do you think, if they help with chores while living back at home as a means to help them earn some money? I do think adult children living at home should be helping out with basic chores for no compensation. So that's just because that's what responsible adults do. You know, no one is going to pay him or her to do laundry or clean dishes when they're living alone or with roommates. Now, that said, if they are doing a job that you would normally pay someone else to do, such as painting your home, cleaning your pool, or mowing your lawn, and your adult child wants that job, then I do think it's acceptable to pay him or her. What are the crucial financial steps adult children need to take as soon as they get out of college or high school and are living at home without any real means of supporting their own household? Yes, it's critical to start building good financial habits, such as saving, and this is even if it's a very small amount, and tracking income and expenses to make sure that you live within your means. These are just sort of some basic habits that everybody needs to get used to doing especially a a child that's living at home and an adult child that's not out on their own yet. What is the best savings plan for young people these days? Yeah, the best way to save is really by automating it. You know, no matter what you choose, uh, whether it's a retirement account or a bank savings account, as soon as you have a job, ask your payroll manager to deposit part of every paycheck into a separate account. So this might be a savings or money market deposit account at an FDIC insured bank. So think about putting 90% of your pay into checking and then 10% into savings. And once you've accumulated two to three months of living expenses in a savings account, you can then begin investing for retirement. So that's something like a workplace 401k, which will be totally automated. And if you don't have a retirement plan at work, you can open up and contribute to an IRA on your own. Thanks to Money Girl for helpful advice. Laura, this is great. Thank you so much. You can check out all her articles on personal finance at quickanddirtytips.com slash money dash girl or subscribe to her podcast at iTunes and Stitcher. And thanks again to my special guest, Laura Adams, for all her great financial tips. Do you have a child who's failed to launch? Share your thoughts in the comments section at quickanddirtytips.com slash mighty-mommy or post your ideas on the Mighty Mommy Facebook page. And you can also email me at mommy at quickanddirtytips.com. Thanks for listening. And until next time, happy parenting. Happy parenting.